Welcome back. Today I want to talk about something slightly different. These things. Horn hook couplers. As a preface to this video, I've done a whole bunch of research into these couplers and their existence. And a lot of this is based off of just guesswork, but I have done research, so if any of it's wrong, let me know. I'm just going off of what I've found and what seems to be the most accurate. For this video, I'm going to break it into four main parts about these couplers. First off, I want to talk about why these things were made, and just the history of their creation, along with the other uh, competing couplers at the time. I also wanted to talk about just how they work. I want to talk about why model railroaders don't like them, and I want to talk about how they've been phased out. The reason for these couplers existing is quite an interesting story. In the late 1950s and early 1960s, model railroading, especially HO scale, was becoming quite popular. Companies such as Varney, Ravel, Manoa, and many more had been creating HO scale rolling stock and locomotives and needed some way to connect their models together. And many came up with very interesting solutions. For example, Varney had these things. These are non-operating HO scale knuckle couplers. They don't move and they are a solid piece that you would slide over another coupler to keep the pieces connected. Another type of coupler that had emerged as popular release, the hook and loop style of couplers, which are still popular in the UK and Europe, but in HO scale, they had become a popular thing as well in the early 1960s. However, one company stood above the rest when it came to HO scale couplers, and that was Katie, who had came out with these. These, if you have not heard of them before, are sprung knuckle couplers that work quite well in rolling stock. However, Katie did not want to sell their couplers to actual manufacturers or let them use them, and created a patent, and did not allow any of the other manufacturers to create any similar type of couplers. So these, unless you were buying them as a just modeler yourself, were out of the question for some time. These competing couplers gave the National Model Railroading Association, the NMRA, some difficulties when creating a standard for HO scale couplers. The NMRA, for those who are unaware, is basically the organization that helps create standards for HO scale rolling stock in weight, size, couplers, and anything along those lines of operation. The NMRA experimented with various different types of couplers, and in the end, settled on these, the horn hook coupler, for a few different reasons. First of all, they were cheap to produce. A whole batch of couplers, for about 100 of them, just stamped in plastic, would cost about a dollar to make, which was good for companies at the time. The couplers had also proven to be very reliable and worked well for running long trains and heavy trains. And lastly, due to the KD coupler patent, this was about the best they could do. A coupler style similar to the KD would have been best for a standard, but since KD took the patent for that, uh, they did not have many options when it came to that style of coupler. The way these things work is very simple. You have a spring here that allows the coupler to move from side to side and uh, push force on another coupler. It has a smooth front here, which allows the couplers to push against each other and slide to the side, where they will be pushed into this groove, which has a really small little locking bit right in there that holds the couplers together. Just to demonstrate, I'll couple these two cars together. One of these is a Tyco, and the other is made by AHM. There are three main reasons that these couplers are currently looked down upon by HO scale modelers, and the first of them is their appearance. Compared to a KD, which looks a lot like a real coupler and acts a lot like a real coupler, these things look anything but realistic. They're very clunky, they're not anywhere near the correct color, and they just don't honestly look all that great. The second reason these things are looked down upon is because of their plastic springs. These things. Over time, they tend to wear out and become unreliable. So a car can have a really springy coupler at the start, and then later on in its life, the coupler can be basically useless. To demonstrate this, I've got these three cars, this one with a really strong coupler, and this one with a really weak coupler. And just to demonstrate, it's a little bit hard to notice on camera, but you can sort of tell based off the springiness from the sound. So this is the bobber caboose. It's got a quite strong coupler. This is the Tyco car. It still does its job, but is kind of weak. And then this is the AHM car. 
sometimes this coupler will even get stuck. So over time, these things wear out and they become unreliable. The last reason why these things are looked down upon is because of their use during operations. If you want to do switching with them, these things are a pain to use. Unlike Katie's, they aren't magnetically operable. You can't put a stick in and twist it with ease without derailing the cars. So usually what you have to do if you want to disconnect these is you have to lift them off the tracks and disconnect them, which if you want to do realistic operations is a massive downside. The downfall of the horn hook coupler came in the late 1990s or early 2000s when the KD coupler's patent expired. The expiration of this patent allowed other companies, such as McHenry, to make their own versions of the KD, such as this, which is the McHenry coupler, and this, which is the Bachman Easy Mate. This allowed more manufacturers to use the similar style to KD's as a standard on their rolling stock, and a lot of them just simply used horn hooks as an option in the box if you still used them. Throughout the 2000s and into the 2010s, horn hooks slowly became less and less popular, with older brands such as Model Power, Tyco, Lifelike, and more going out of business, the brands who mostly used horn hook couplers, and more companies upping their quality, such as Walther's, Bachman, and more. Now, the KD and knuckle coupler is the standard for HO scale, and very rarely will you see a new piece of rolling stock coming with horn hook couplers from the factory. So, thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this video about horn hook couplers.